members, Director Katie Maple, Karina Telemontes, and Supervisor Hume. With that, uh, would the clerk please take the roll? Yes. Desmond? Here. Frost? Here. Geta? Here. Hume? Kennedy? Here. Maple? Maple? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Here. <laughs> Rodriguez? Here. Sandu? Serna? Here. Spies? Here. Uh, Talamensa? Uh, Terry? Valenzuela? Here. Oh, Terry, okay. Valenzuela? Here. Vang? Here. And Sing Allen? Here. And you have a quorum. Excellent. Next up is our Pledge of Allegiance. I'd like to ask our Vice Chair Desmond to lead us in the pledge. <clears throat> I, pl I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you. And would the clerk um, please read the announcements and instructions for public comment and how to view the meeting. Yes. In compliance with directives of the County, State, and Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the meeting is open to public attendance pursuant to health and safety guidelines. The practice of social distancing and wearing of face coverings is re recommended for health and safety of all persons participating in person during the meeting, although it is not required. Seating is limited and available on a first-come, first-served basis. To make a public comment, please complete a speaker um, request form and hand it to the clerk. That's me. And the chairperson will call your name when it's your turn to make a comment. To make a telephone comment at today's meeting, dial 916-875-2500 and follow the prompts to be placed in queue for a Pacific agenda item or off agenda matter. When the chair opens public comment for Pacific off agenda matter, I mean, agenda matter or off agenda matter, callers will be transferred from the queue into the meeting to make a comment. Written comments are always accepted. Send your comment to board clerk at saccounty.gov and your comment will be routed to the board and filed in the record. This meeting of the Sacramento Transportation Authority is Cablecast Live on Metro Cable 14, the local government affairs channel on Comcast, Consolidated Communications, and AT&T U-verse cable systems. This meeting is closed captioned and live streamed at metro14live.sacccounty.gov. Today's meeting will replay Sunday, January 15th at 2 p.m. on Channel 14. This meeting can also be viewed at youtube.com backslash Metro Cable 14. And that concludes my announcements. All right, thank you for that. Our next item is our selection of chair and vice chair for calendar year 2023. And as is customary every January, the board will nominate and vote on a new chair and vice chair. But before we begin this item, I would like to ask our executive director, Kevin Busey, to provide some background. Okay, thank you very much. So. Uh, SDA rules require that the board select a chair and a vice chair each calendar year. Any board member may serve as chair or vice chair with few exceptions. The chairmanship has traditionally alternated between a county supervisor and a city council member. And the city council has, councils have also traditionally taken turns alternating between the city of Sacramento and one of the smaller cities. And we've provided in the staff report two tables, uh, tables one and two, that kind of provide the background on how that transition has occurred over time. Thanks, Bobby. All right, thank you for that background um, information. And with that, I will use this um, executive privilege as chair and nominate our vice chair, Rich Desmond, to be the incoming chair. Second. All right, can we get a roll call for the chair position? Yes. Sorry about that. Um, Desmond? Aye. Frost? Geta? Aye. Hume? Aye. Kennedy? Aye. Maple? Aye. Rodriguez? Aye. Sandu? Aye. Serna? Aye. Spies? Aye. Uh, Talamenza? Terry? Aye. Valenzuela? Yes. Vang? Yes. And Sing Allen? Yes. And your motion carries um, with member, uh, with Director Talamantes. You, you missed uh, Director Maple. Talamantes. Oh, she, right. yeah. oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's Talamantes. Talamantes. Okay. And yes. 
Did we get all right? Um, and then your motion maple? carries. Okay. I didn't hear maple. But... All right. Very good. And next up is our vice chair. I would like to nominate uh, Director Eric. Gale. I'm okay. sorry, you cut out a bit there. Was that for Geta for vice chair? I would like to nominate Director Eric Guerra from Sacramento. Second. I'll second. Um, I got a second from Cerna in chambers before I heard that one from Rodriguez. Okay. okay. All right, and on to the roll call vote. Um, Desmond? Aye. Frost? Aye. Geta? Aye. Hume? Aye. Kennedy? Aye. Maple? Aye. Rodriguez? Aye. Sandu? Aye. Serna? Aye. Um, Spies? Aye. Talamenza? Men? Talamantes. Talamantes. Yes. I'm yes. sorry. I will get it right. I promise. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Talamantes. Yes. Okay. Terry? Aye. Valenzuela? Yes. And Vang? Yes. And your motion carries. All right, very good. And with that, uh, I just want to thank everyone for this past year. It's been a great privilege serving as your chair and getting to know some of you over the course of the year. Um, some great work took place, including the hiring of our new executive director, although it's not considered new anymore. But, um, <laughs> but thank you again. I um, enjoyed myself and looking forward to continued work and collaboration with all of you. With Bobby, that, I'm going to turn over my duties to our new chair. Bobby, can I just say a word? I just want to. I just want to thank you for your leadership with the STA this past year. Uh, you truly are an outstanding leader. So thank you. Well, thank you, Director Rodriguez. I appreciate the kind words. Well, thank you, uh, uh, the Director Singh Allen, and uh, appreciate your. It's been a, a pleasure working with you for the past year, and I also want to thank my fellow authority uh, uh, board members for uh, supporting me to be your chair this year and, and joining you on the important work of, of the authority in, in 2023. Um, so with that, we'll move on to uh, item number two, which is uh, public comment. Items not on the agenda, so I'll look to our, our clerk. Do we have any uh, public comments, off agenda public comment? Um, I do not have any here in chambers, and I do not have any here in the phone queues. And I just wanted to also say for the record that there were no um, public comments for item number one as well. Oh, thank you, Terrell. Appreciate that. Okay, well, then move on to item number three. That's our executive director's report. I'll turn it over to uh, Mr. Busey. Okay, thanks very much. So uh, today we have uh, several new STA governing board members. The County of Sacramento's new representative, Supervisor Pat Hume. Uh, the city of Sacramento's new representatives are council members Katie Maple and Karina Talamantes. Uh, please join me in welcoming our new SDA go uh, governing board members. Uh, so staff has prepared uh, new governing board member welcome packets and we'll distribute those prior to the next SDA board meeting. Uh, going on to my second item here. So in-person meetings in March of 2023. So in October of 17th, 2022, the governor announced that the COVID-19 state of emergency will end on February 28th of uh, this year. Uh, so the SDA governing board has been meeting either virtually or using a hybrid format uh, during the proclaimed state of emergency as allowed under AB 361. Uh, with the end of the state of emergency, in-person meetings will begin in March of 2023. I just wanna make sure everyone's aware of that. And that, that is my uh, concludes short, your yeah that concludes your report. my uh, report. Okay, thank you. Yeah, well, okay. <laughs> we'll ease into thank it you. this year, Kevin. Right? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll turn to my uh, uh, board members. See if anybody has any any comments or questions of our executive director. Seeing none. Any online? Uh, any uh, no, I do not see any hand raises here in the Zoom. Any public comment on? I this do item? not have any public comment in chambers or in the call queue. Okay. Great, then we'll move along to uh, our consent items, uh, items four through six. Any, mem do, do, uh, any members have any comments or wish to remove an item from consent? I'll move approval, Mr. Chair. I'll second. Okay. So I have a first from Geta, and was that a second from Rodriguez? Yes. Okay. Okay, we have a first and second. Before we, uh, before we vote, I'll ask, are there any comments or questions from board members? Anyone online? I do not have any public comment in chambers or on the uh, call queues. Okay. Any, um, oh, director, oh, 
Direct, uh, Director Hume. I, has, I apologize. I confused the chair by not using the request to speak <laughs> button. Uh, I will we went over clear, this the other day. Yeah, yeah. I thought we, yeah, I thought we covered this. I, 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 you know, some people are slow on the uptake. I, I'm a late bloomer, <laughs> but uh, I just wanted to say that I'm going to recuse. I would like a, a note of a recusal on item number four, given that I was not at that meeting. Uh, but I'm happy to uh, uh, go along with the motion for items five and six. Okay. Thank you, Director Hume. Okay. Anyone else, Terrell? That you see in the no, queue? I'm not seeing any other hand raises. Okay. Any public comment on the consent items? No, there is no public comment in chambers or um, on the phone queues. For okay, well then we have a motion and a second. Please uh, call the roll, taking note that uh, Director Hume will be recusing himself from item four. Yes, Desmond. Aye. Frost. Aye. Geta. Aye. Hume. Aye. Kennedy. Aye. Maple. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Sandu. Sandu. Serna. Aye. Singh Allen. Aye. Spies. Aye. Tal Talamentes. Aye. Uh, Terry. Aye. Valenzuela. Yes. Vang. Yes. Sandu. Aye. Okay, and your motion carries with um, Director Hume recusing from item number four. Okay, thank you. Moving on to item number seven, our update regarding anticipated uh, items in 2023. Mr. Mm -hmm. Busey. Okay, can you please put the PowerPoint up for item number seven, please? Kevin Busey, Executive Director, here to, to present on anticipated major board items of 2023. I thought this would be a good opportunity to look ahead for the next six months. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and begin. Okay, this works. That's great. All right. So uh, before I get into the next couple of months, I want to talk about existing agreements that we have in place um, that are going to be ending in June of 23, which is going to necessitate some further board action. So we have a variety of ongoing MOUs um, that are used for ongoing annual programs that's used to distribute our Measure A funds. These MOUs are used to formulaically allocate uh, Measure A sales tax revenue on a monthly basis, and that represents about 80% of our funding. And so we need to get those MOUs back up and running again. They're typically for about five years, so we're going to another five-year cycle. Along with that, we're going to be asking for um, some uh, plans on how those funds are going to be used, and so I'll be presenting that here shortly. Uh, the other item we have is the neighborhood shuttle grant agreements. Those also ex expire in June of 23. Uh, just as a reminder, uh, we used about 10 years of uh, accumulated funding plus the current few years of revenue through June of 23 to fund two, two programs, this uh, SACRT Smart Ride program and then the uh, Paratransit Moving Youth to Jobs program. So those two are funded and we're going to be coming out with a, essentially a new uh, grant cycle for those uh, programs. So in February, what we're looking at is, I just talked about the neighborhood shuttle competitive funding. So what we're looking at is uh, providing recommendations on how we would move forward with the schedule and approach for that. We've also got uh, refinancing opportunities for our existing Measure A bonds. So Dustin's going to be presenting on a couple items after this, and it's going to talk about revenue and bonds. And there is the potential for some, a potential opportunity for some refinancing. So this is going to kind of get, set the framework for that future discussion in February, should should uh, the marketing conditions get there. Uh, and then finally, the last item is a consideration of future transportation funding. So. At that February meeting, I anticipate recommending the creation of a subcommittee to provide recommendations to the full board on whether or not we would want to, it's even practical to consider a, a, a new funding in 24 or beyond, uh, what, what that might look like, and then as well as uh, what would be the schedule and process for that. So we'd create a small subcommittee to look at that. Uh, and then I am looking at, with that subcommittee, having a couple of citizens uh, involved in that, one on the environmental side and one on the labor side. Uh, so that will be my anticipated recommendation in February. Uh, moving to March. March, I'm going to ask SACOG to uh, make a presentation on the 2024 blueprint. Uh, and then we're going to start with our first set of ongoing MOUs. So we've got the SAC Metro Air Quality Management District. Um, so they, they, get a, they get their allocation of funding. So we're going to be asking them to present on their transportation-related air quality five-year program. 
so we'll have a, here's what we, here's the five years of funding and here's how we plan to use those funds. Uh, we've also got the Sac County uh, Traffic Mitigation Fee Program, the Draft Nexus Study, and so that draft will come. We've been, been working on that and we're in the process of updating that. And I realize it's a lot of information, but I kind of want to lay it out for you. So uh, then we'll have our next set of ongoing MOUs. These are the MOUs with the county and the cities. So it'll it'll cover. Um, we'll include with that uh, the traffic control and safety, the five-year program. So how we're going to use those funds, how those county cities plan to use those funds, and then we'll also be doing a city, street, and road uh, maintenance program annual report. So reports required every every two years, and so what we've been doing is getting individual reports from the counties, the county, and the cities. We're going to do a little different this year. We're going to do a consolidated report of the county and all the cities, uh, looking at, you know, what is the pavement condition within the county and the cities? What is the existing funding? Um, what funding they get from other sources, as well as, you know, what are some potential options if we wanted to get all the roads to a good pavement condition? Um, there'll probably be three alternatives looking at how can we get the roads to a really good condition. So I'm currently in the process of trying to get a small contract in place to do that study work. And then the, the final item I had is the hopefully. By April, you've already seen the draft Nexus study, so we'll hopefully be adopting that after hearing comments from the prior month. So May, um, so this is the ongoing MOUs for SACRT and paratransit. The reporting is uh, SACRT will be providing a traffic congestion relief uh, five-year program, showing how they are plan to use those funds. And then also uh, senior disabled transportation funding, which is a separate little source of pot of funding, uh, we'll be asking for five-year programs from SACRT and paratransit. And then uh, we have an update on the Smart Growth Incentive Program. So we did a, we essentially, the board took action to have a strategy to leverage our Smart Growth Incentive funds as a local match for the Community Design, uh, SACOX Community Design Grant Program. And so we anticipate by May we'll have an idea of uh, whether, how much of the awards of the Community Design Program and if we were able to, how much we were able to leverage. Uh, anticipate in May we'll probably have uh, neighborhood shuttle proposals in hand to present, uh, and then we'll have a draft budget. Moving on to June, so in June we'll have an update on Measure A advocacy uh, and SB1 competitive programs. So uh, there's a lot of SB1 competitive programs that the awards are going to happen in June, and we've been advocating for a variety of transportation projects, as well as we've applied for a couple of them, um, and so we'll be uh, we'll end up presenting on the results of that. There'll be the budget adoption, uh, you, which will accommodate any comments we saw in the prior month, and then the neighborhood shuttle agreements, which would, if we got any comments from the prior month on neighborhood shuttle proposals, will accommodate that. So a lot of information, high level overview of what's coming. Uh, open any questions. Okay, thank you, Kevin, I appreciate that. Um, any, any questions from board members or comments? Anyone online? Terrell? I do not have any public comment in chambers, and I don't have any in the phone queues. And um, I thought I saw a request to speak from uh, Director Telemontes. Are you? Did you still Director want to Telemontes. speak? No? Telemontes. Telemontes. Okay, we're just going to get you off of there. Perfect. And and I don't see any hand raises in the Zoom. I, I have a question for Kevin. I was going to make a quip, um, but I decided not to. <laughs> Director Hume, but um, I had a question. You know, we've been having a lot of discussions about the uh, SAVSA funding and and pursuing a, a legislative fix that will allow us to um, impose a fee for uh, to support the abandoned vehicle storage authorities' efforts. Will you be coming back to us with the, to the board with updates about that and maybe opportunities? Uh, if this, I mean, at least have a discussion about whether this body might want to support a legislative effort. Yeah, I can absolutely. Uh, I think I can come back in February with an update. I've been providing uh, email updates to the chair and vice chair, but I can definitely right. uh, do a more formal update in February. That's probably a good idea. I mean, the, currently we've got an unbacked bill. We're looking for a sponsor, um, and if we can get that bill sponsored, we can restore the SAS for funding uh, through a few additional SDA actions. So. Which it has a big impact. The, the 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 end of that funding has a big impact to all of our our respective jurisdictions. So, I think we'd appreciate all appreciate that discussion. Thanks, Kevin. And any public comment on this on the? Uh, no, board? there were no public comment in queue or um, in chambers. Okay. Then, I have one. Oh, Sing Allen. Oh. Sorry about that. Chair yes, Emeritus just, Sing oh. Allen. Chair, <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. So yes, um, and just um, 
uh, based on the comments that our, uh, our chair just provided regarding the legislative fix, I do think that um, I know that uh, myself as the past chair and then um, and Chair Desmond, we've been privy to those conversations and the need, but I do think it's worthwhile to bring in the rest of the board because all of us will have different relationships with various members of the legislature. And if we go down that route, we will definitely need everyone's support and all hands on deck to take care of this very important issue. That's all. Great point. Thank you. Bobby, thank you. Yeah, agree. Okay, uh, seeing no other comments, we will move on to item number eight. which is our 2024 revenue forecast. Mr. Purrington, and welcome. if we can get the PowerPoint up for item number eight, please. Am I pronouncing that right, Dustin? Purrington, yes. Purrington, okay. All right, so good afternoon, board and board chair, and welcome to the new members. My name is Dustin Purinton, the accounting manager with STA, and I'm here to present the 2024 revenue projection. So the first slide here, we're going back in time to 2022 fiscal year, just to get a sense of where all the revenue lies. I'd like to note that Measure A sales tax is the most significant portion that we receive, and that the Sacramento Band and Vehicle Service Authority that we've been talking about sunsetted in April of 2022. So that funding will be dropping off in 2023. There's still some minor amounts coming in, but it's not gonna be anywhere near what it was. The next slide is a tree map to show the significance of the revenues. Um, the big gray swath is they measure a sales tax, just to give you a visual representation of it. And in this slide, we're breaking down where does the measure a sales tax go where does it flow through the authority? Uh, the most significant portion is the ongoing program. Kevin mentioned the MOUs that all of the uh, partner agencies have. The MOUs facilitate the pass-through funding for the ongoing program. And the other large portion is the capital. And there's two subgroups to the capital program, the PAYGO projects, which are all contract-based. Um, the citizen approved initiative projects that we are um, contracted and, and paying for. And the other portion is the debt service. The debt service will increase in the 2029 fiscal year to a much larger portion of the whole pie because the large bond series are gonna be, the principal payments are going to become due. So, and that's when we start paying down the, the larger the series. So, this slide here represents the Measure A sales tax forecast from the beginning of the ordinance all the way through the sunset in 2039 uh, with a red line in the middle showing where we're at today. So everything before the red line is history, actuals, and everything after is a projection from our third-party consultant, Avenue uh, Muni Services, LLC, and they perform that in December of 2022. We have this routinely updated. So about every six months, we get a new snapshot of where we're at. And if anything significant changes, we, we would let everyone know and all the partner agencies. Um, to highlight a few things on the graph that you've probably already noticed, um, fiscal year 2010, 2010, we had a decline. That was the um, Great Recession. And we've slowly recovered from that to 2020, where we were in the midst of the pandemic. There were some offsetting factors during the pandemic, so we did not have nearly as big of a decline as other counties, other areas. Um, we have strong per capita income in Sacramento County, and it's been increasing over the last 10 years. Uh, we've had inflation that has increased prices for everything and increased the, the sales tax numbers. And the Wayfair decision came in, in in late fiscal year 2019, and that's the taxation of Amazon and eBay and all the other East e-tailers. E um, so with that coming online, we've gotten a significant amount of revenue from that. Uh, and then the forecast out into the future, uh, there is a 
forecasted recession in 2035 um, from our third party consultants about every 10 years we should expect a recession. So it's really just built in, it's a projection. So this slide represents the, the impact fee program. And again, it's from inception to sunset in 2039. Um, you can see it's very volatile. It changes dramatically from year to year just based on development in the areas. These fees are driven off of what I'd call a per door basis. So if there are new doors added, new homes, new apartments, new businesses, the fees are driven off of those new, new um, buildings. Um, I'd like to say that the forecast uh, is about 199 million over the life of the program and the projected initial um, voter approved expenditure plan was 488 million. So we're well under what was initially planned for this program. Um, and the projection out into the future is based on um, projected development and planned land use and some other factors. We did have a third party consultant prepare this for us. It was economic and planning systems and they did it in March of 2021. But in conclusion, I'd like to leave you with the revenue is, has been strong at STA and it is increasing and we can cover all current operating expenditures and that these forecasts really help our partner agencies budget and plan out for the future. Um, so, and we, it assists with our bond portfolio. We're commonly asked to provide projections to support our funding. So with that, I'd like to open the floor to any questions that you have. Okay. Thank you, Dustin. And any questions or comments from directors? Anyone online? I do not see anyone in the Zoom. Direct, Director hands. Frost. So I wonder if you can go back to that last slide. Uh, I was just wondering what the peak in 2034 to 2036 um, is attributed to. Well, it, it was based on the, the projections that were performed by the consultant. So it, there may have been something that they, they gathered that, that showed a new development, possibly. I'm not exactly sure what the, the spike is, but it's forecasted out. I, I think I can answer that. I, I, if I remember correctly, I think there was a very large hospital plan to be built around that time frame, and that was what was driving it. But we could go back and check. And I was just up. curious. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. You can just email me or email or something. Thank you. Okay. I'm sorry, Darrell. Did you say, was there anyone online? I don't see any. Yeah, no. I don't see any other hand raises in the Zoom. Okay. How about uh, any public comment? Uh, there is none in chambers and there's none in the call queues. Okay. Let's receive and file. Thank you very much. Or information only. Thank you very much, Dustin. And uh, that'll take us to number uh, item number nine and uh, also featuring you, presentation of authority bonds. All right. Well, so good afternoon again. Um, so STA staff regularly work with our consultant financial advisors, and currently it's pre PFM financial advisors to assess market conditions and if there's any sort of cost savings available in our bond portfolio. And we have Peter Schellenberger online. He will be um, providing a little bit more detail. He's a managing director at PFM, and. We've worked with him for a number of years, and most recently, he's helped us negotiate the 2009C standby bond purchase agreement and the 2012 bond refinancing. So, and that, those both just recently happened this, this last year. So, I'm gonna turn it over to Peter for his presentation. Okay, and um, uh, Peter is here in the Zoom, and then we're just gonna get this PowerPoint um, up here in just a moment so you can begin with it. Thank you very much. Okay, there you go. There's your PowerPoint. Thank you. And uh, good afternoon, Chair Desmond and members of the board. Uh, again, I'm Peter Schellenberger. I work with uh, Public Financial Management or PFM Financial Advisors uh, in our San, San Francisco office. Um, and I look forward to being in person when... Uh, when you are, uh, if I knew there would be that many bodies in chambers, I would be there with you today, but it's good to see <laughs> that we're getting back to it. 
Uh, I've got, a, as Dustin pointed out, a quick market update. There's been a lot. Uh, 2022 was an active year across the equity markets and the bond markets. We'll focus on the bond markets. And then we'll look at uh, the authorities' debt portfolio within the market context and uh, discuss some potential opportunities and then take any questions that you might have. Um, thank you. We'll move to the first page with content. Uh, and here is uh, an overview. This shows two yield curves. Forgive me, I know many folks have, have looked at interest rate curves, uh, but I, I, I know some have not. So I forgive me if I, if I get too basic here. Um, as we look at interest rates, we look at yield curves. Yield curves provide maturities on the bottom from one year one to year 30. And this is the yield that investors receive for a tax exempt bond, similar to uh, the transportation authorities. And this has two yield curves. They reset every day. This is uh, back in January 5th, 2022, compared to 2023, and just how much interest rates have gone up. Uh, they've on the short end a one year maturity a one year a bond that was maturing in one year investors were receiving 20 basis points or 0.2 percent uh, this time last year now nowadays with the increased rates they're receiving 2.6 percent yield or, or rate of return short term rates have gone up significantly with uh, the the, Fe the federal open market committee or the FOMC increasing the Fed funds rate to combat inflation. So we've really seen short-term rates increase significantly. We've seen long-term rates go up as well. Uh, so this just demonstrates that we're, we're, we're uh, no longer in the historically low interest rate environment. Rates, are, uh, rates have increased through 2022. They're beginning to stabilize. And we can look at the next page. We, we asked the question, just how do today's interest rates compare when we take a 30-year look back? How do they compare? And the question is, it, it, what percentage of time over that 30-year period have rates been lower than they are today? Um, and in, in the short end of the curve, years one through five, rates have been lower anywhere from about 50 to 65% of the time. So we're no longer in a historically low interest rate period at all on the short end of the yield curve. On the longer, when you look 10 years and out, rates have only been lower about 35% of the time when you look back 30 years. So even though we felt rates go up, long-term rates are still fairly attractive when you look and compare over the last 30 years. And we can look at the next page. Uh, th this demonstrates, going back to 2016, if we look at tax-exempt rates, we just track the two-year rate over time, the 10-year rate, and a 30-year rate. What do we observe? A lot of squiggly lines. We observe a lot of squiggly lines, uh, which is to say a great deal of volatility. It really just has not been a very predictable interest rate uh, trajectory at all when we look back to 2016. We see the spike uh, there in, in, in May uh, of the pandemic, and that was a short-lived spike. And then rates came down. The, the FOMC or the Fed Federal Reserve lowered rates as low as they possibly could, zero, and that brought that two-year rate down pretty close to zero. And then inflation kicked in towards the end of uh, 21 into 2022, and you could see the impacts of inflation and the monetary policy through the, the Federal Reserve were back in a fairly high interest rate environment. Although, you look toward, since October, now we're starting to see long-term rates trend back down. And so... Uh, there's a feeling out there, if you read the articles, that inflation may have peaked, that the Fed, the Federal Reserve may have taken all the necessary actions. They think there's one more to come, but we're starting to see some positive rate movement following that news and, and uh, some stability in, in the broader market. And we can look at the next page. That was looking at long-term rates, fixed rates. Here are short-term variable rates. And we have two rates to look at. Here is what we call SIFMA. It's an index, and SIFMA stands for the Securities Industry, the Financial Markets Association, SIFMA. What it tracks is uh, seven-day uh, seven paper, paper or bonds that reset, reset weekly or every week. And the Transportation Authority does have uh, weekly variable rate bonds. So we track those. 
And it also shows the Fed funds rate and how that was close to zero through the pandemic, and it's increased to about, uh, currently it's pretty close to 4.5%. We show it topping off at 3% back in October. Um, and so and this is to show that the weekly variable rate rates have been incre have been following pace with the increases in the uh, Fed funds rate. Um, to no surprise, that's really what drives the broader short-term market where the Fed funds rate, we're at 4.5%. And in a moment, we'll take a look at a couple other uh, indices. So we can look at the next page. Thank you. Uh, the, what we track or the industry tracks is the amount of uh, municipal bonds sold uh, over the course of a year, just to take a look at supply and demand dynamics. So here is the supply of municipal bonds that have come to market and have been sold from 2016 annually through 2022. We listed monthly and then on the bottom. In 2022, there was 384 billion of uh, tax exempt uh, municipal debt sold into the market. You sold 24 million of refunding bonds in uh, August of last year. So you're, you're included in that number. Um, you could see that that's a 20% drop from 2021 and really the average going back the last several years. So uh, as interest rates have, in have increased, we see naturally uh, bond issuance decrease. So supply uh, has come down. That's, that's one side of the equation. The amount of federal funding that has been made available to state and local governments has helped reduce the need for borrowing as well. So that's really the two factors that has reduced the need to issue bonds or debt, uh, higher interest rates and the amount of outside federal funding, uh, which is good when supply is down and you want to access the market as a, as a uh, highly rated issuer like yourselves, it's good to have less supply uh, to compete with. And on the next slide, we could look at demand. Here's the demand. Uh, the folks, primary buyers of tax exempt bonds are municipal bond funds managed by professional money fund managers. And when you see uh, those green bars, we're getting net inflows coming into these municipal bond funds. We net increase in investor demand or dollars uh, looking to purchase bonds like yours, uh, sales tax revenue bonds. Through 2022, we have seen a lot of red. We've seen quite a bit uh, as rates have increased. We have seen um, we have seen uh, muni bond funds sell out of their position, largely to manage their overall rate of return. And so we have seen, even though on the prior slide, supply is down 20%. Some of the money that's looking to to invest in these is also coming down. So there's always an equilibrium. This is the other side of it. This is the demand side of the equation. And on the next slide, just a, a final slide in terms of the market, and then I'll pause. Um, we we borrow the crystal ball from Bloomberg, and Bloomberg surveys a group of economists that asks, where do you see rates going in the next? couple of years, and here we break it out by uh, current yields, the first quarter of 2023, where we are today, through the first quarter of 2025. And we pulled together these rates uh, just a, a week ago or so. So looking at the 10-year treasury, for instance, it 3.78% is the 10-year treasury. Well, just in the last uh, two weeks, we've seen that drop 20 basis points. So we're now down at 3.58% at the 10-year treasury. So we're starting to see some stability. We're starting to see some rates come down. Some positive new, uh, news on sort of controlled inflation is um, being reflected in these rates. If you look at the trajectory, for, for instance, at the 10-year Treasury, most economists expect to see another rate hike from the Federal Reserve, uh, increasing probably the Fed funds rate from this 4.5% to 5%. They expect them, uh, the, Fed, the Fed to keep that fairly high um, through, through the rest of 2023 into 2024. With that, the 10-year Treasury sort of remains stable uh, and then comes down, uh, according to this forecast and prediction, in part because there is a forecasted and potential recession built into this. So one scenario is the Fed increases the, the Fed funds rate to 5%, holds it there, 
we're starting to see some softening in the, in the economy. We, we enter into a recession and then the Fed starts backing off and reducing the Fed funds rate. And you could track the Fed funds rate down below, uh, topping off on the upper bound up to 5%. But by the end of 2024, down to 3.3. So that's the sort of recessionary scenario built into this forecast where the Fed controls inflation, we enter a recession, and they'll reduce rates thereafter. So that's 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 what the experts are saying, at least. So with that, we're going to look at your debt portfolio, but I will pause just to see if you have any questions on the general market. Any questions or comments? Peter, I think you said you were going to make this very basic, this presentation. Um, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, any any comments or questions from board members? Any anyone online at this no, point? No, I, I don't see any hand raises in the Zoom. Okay, please proceed, Peter. It. Thank you very much. Okay, looking at your debt portfolio in that context, slightly elevated rates, uh, stable, likely to come down in the future. Where do you stand today? The authority has three hundred and forty-two million, three hundred and forty-two point five million of bonds outstanding. Uh, you were just upgraded in August by S&P and Fitch, the two rating agencies that rate you to a AAA rating. So you're the highest possible rating. Uh, congratulations. And that is reflective of your strong regional economy and a well-managed portfolio. Um, $318 million of the debt is in variable rate uh, demand bonds. It's, it's the bonds that reset every week. Um, combined with those variable rate bonds is the table below. There's, a, there's an equal amount, 318 million of interest rate swaps, and those swaps match with the bonds and they create a synthetic fixed rate. So rather than going up and down with the variable rate, the authority pays an interest rate of about 3.71% on that $318 million. The mark to market, those interest rate swaps have a market valuation. They change as interest rates go up, current market valuations. If the authority wanted to say, I'm tired of the swaps, <clears throat> I'd like to terminate and cancel those, you would have to pay the various counterparties, of which there are three, a total of 36, about 37 million, to cancel those swaps to exit them altogether under current market conditions. That's a quick snapshot of your debt portfolio. We'll drill down into some additional detail, but we'll look at the annual payments uh, on the next page. Annual debt service, principal and interest on that debt portfolio um, is on that second column to the right, total existing debt service. It'll be about $19 million through 2028. Most of that is associated with, the two, with bonds that were issued in 2009. They've been refinanced a little bit in 2014 and 2015. So the 2009 Cs, the 2014 As, the 2015 As, those are all your variable rate debt, all of which was really issued in 2009 to advance projects back then. Um, the 2012 bonds were refinanced in 2022 for savings. You saved about $2 million through 2028 by refinancing those last year. Uh, and the total is about 19 million of annual principal and interest through 2028, increasing to about $36 million thereafter when the majority of the bonds start repaying principal. We look at debt service coverage, which is a simple ratio. When we look at your budgeted sales tax revenues for uh, fiscal 2023, $164 million of sales tax revenue. It is all pledged to bondholders, even though they only need a portion of it. And when, it, when we compare that sales tax revenue without assuming any growth compared to the debt service obligation. You have, for instance, in 2024, $8.72 of sales tax revenue to pay every dollar of debt service. So anything over two times is considered very high. You're at eight times, you drop down to four and a half times when, when your bonds begin repaying in earnest in 2029. Very high debt service coverage. That's the primary factor for your AAA rating. I'll go to the next page. This just visually shows that. So I won't dwell that on that. We can look at the next page. Now, chatting with Kevin and, and Dustin, uh, they're getting up to speed, understanding the interest rate swaps. We know that there are some new folks on the board. And there are there is some complexity. So I'm going to try to move quickly. I appreciate your indulgence through three slides on interest rate swaps, just so you understand what we're talking about. And then we'll come back in, in, in the next several weeks to show some, some further analysis here. 
the first basic question is why why use an interest rate swap? Um, an interest rate swap it locks in current interest rates for future issuance. So back in 2006, Sacramento Transportation Authority you identified 318 million dollars of future borrowing needs for projects that were that were going to be funded in 2009. Um, the interest rate environment at the time was attractive. The only way to lock in interest rates in 2006 for bonds issued three years later was not in the fixed rate market. It had to be done in the interest rate swap market. And so the decision was made to issue interest rate swaps just to lock in those interest rates for future projects and in doing so provide budget certainty. So that's that's why folks use interest rate swaps, not to game the market, uh, but really to provide some certainty for future issuance down down road. Maybe we can look at the next page. The an interest rate swap is an exchange of interest rates uh, between two counterparties. You have STA and you have three counterparties, Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, and JP Morgan. And the agreement is the authority will pay to these counterparties an average rate of 3.71%. And the bank counterparties will in turn repay pay a variable rate, a weekly variable rate back to the authority. So that's the swap contract simply establishes a locks in a fixed rate of 3.71%, the swap contract. Then we look at the next page. We marry that swap contract with actual bond issuance. The bonds are issued to raise pro proceeds for the project. And uh, here we have the swap contract on the top. In, in that, that squiggly red line, the variable rate received by the authority paid by the counterparty, that should equal the variable rate paid from the authority to bondholders. And it does. The amount that you've received over the last 12 plus years uh, from counterparties has been sufficient to pay bondholders. And so you're really left with that 3.71%. Sort of a graphical way to show what we call synthetic fixed rate. Uh, so the, the interest rate swaps accomplished that, provided budget certainty, and locked in this rate of 3.71%. We look at the next page. There are additional fees to get to the total cost of that $318 million of your portfolio. So we've seen there's the 3.71% fixed rate. There are, uh, we need remarketing agents, uh, underwriting firms that remarket the variable rate bonds each week to bond investors. And thirdly, in the case that that investors on any given week don't want to hold those bonds, don't want to purchase those bonds, we need a we need to guarantee that they can they can uh, put back those bonds. And so, what the authority and every issuer like the authority does is uh, pay a commercial bank for liquidity and a standby bond purchase agreement, such that when a case were to come up where investors did not want to purchase the authority's bonds, they are standing by, hence the standby, standing by to purchase those bonds and they guarantee liquidity for a well-functioning market. That costs about 35 basis points or 0.35%. So the fully loaded cost, the punchline, and I appreciate your indulgence, the fully loaded cost of those interest rate swaps is about 4.12%, 4.12%. Very high flyby on, on the portfolio with some depth on the, on the interest rate swaps. We just thought that was good for context for new members. And this last page gives you uh, just a look back and a look forward. Recent accomplishments, as I've noted, uh, the refunding of the 2012 bonds last August uh, to save about $2 million through 2028, about 380000 annually. Your upgrade to AAA, so you're in very good standing, the highest possible. Uh, reflecting the strong sales tax growth, I mean, your sales tax growth from 2019 was $131 million up to 173, 173 million in, in 22, that's 31% growth, has driven fundamentally uh, your high credit rating. Um, and, then, and then lastly, Kevin and Dustin is, uh, have asked and we're working collaboratively to see if there's a way to potentially save a few dollars and simplify the portfolio 
and, and, and reduce some of the interest rate swaps and fix those out. So we're going to come back in the weeks to come to share that analysis with you. So again, I appreciate you uh, sitting through that, that, that presentation. I'm happy to take any questions. Peter, thank you. I appreciate the presentation and reminding my, me why I was an English major in college. Um, I, I, we have a few, few directors um, in the queue, so I'll start with Director Hume. Thank you, Chair. And, uh, thank you, Peter, for that uh, presentation. I know that the temptation for board members is to allow uh, this type of a presentation translate into the teacher from the Charlie Brown cartoons, where it all <laughs> just starts to sound the same. But it, this is important information for a couple of reasons. And in my first iteration on this board, the then executive director and I would often spar over the merits of, of PAYGO versus debt service. Because when you, when you uh, uh, encumber a project with debt, it's about a 300% cost premium. Uh, and so like the old proverb that if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. If you want that project quickly, you're going to be paying a lot more. And so you're going to be able to deliver fewer projects with the same amount of money. So it's an important consideration. And then when you get into kind of the two things that, that you went over in your presentation, both uh, sort of the prudence from the investment side of things, and, and watching that yield curve, uh, because as, as we saw in your presentation, and I saw just the other day, where a seven-year yield was paying higher than a 10-year yield, and so you were actually losing money by letting them hold on to your money uh, longer. Uh, and so it's important to watch that. And it looked like, by your presentation, that roughly second quarter of 24, that yield curve ought to uh, uh, flip to where going to longer-term investments is actually going to make sense, because the shorter-term yield is going to be uh, uh, lower than it is now where it's actually paying better, or what's referred to as an inverse yield curve. But, um, and then the final thing that I would just like to say is that the, the, the swapping of interest rates is an important consideration and can save considerable amounts of money and make the projects uh, 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 deliverable uh, for, for less. Uh, and that um, there was one other point that I was going to make, and it's eluding me now. Uh, it had to do with that as well on the swapping. Oh, the, uh, the, the penalties that you, you put up, that it basically if we were to say, uh, no, we're done, we want our money back, we're actually going to have to pay $37 million to get our own money back. So these are all important considerations that, that you take into mind uh, you know, as we're trying to, to get, squeeze the most out of these dollars. So appreciate the presentation. Thank you, Director Hume. Director Frost. Thank you. I, I'm curious. I've been reading that there might be uh, some changes in how investors uh, maybe a decrease in interest in long-term bonds. Have you found that to be true? Yeah, it's a it's a good question. Um, the the, the types of investors like insurance corporations have these expected liabilities out long, and so they have to, as the underwriters put it, put their money to work, and they have to do it out long to satisfy some of those long, long-term liabilities. But to your point, uh, boy, even in a high inflation inflationary environment here, you know, if somebody's holding a 30-year AAA rated bond and you're a AAA rated entity, they're re they're getting about 3.5, 3.7% annually. So there's not a, and you could stay fairly short and still get about 80% of that. And so the tendency during this in rising interest rate environment has been for investors to say shorter and shorter, which, which is protective for them. They can let the interest rates rise. They won't get too burned if they stay short. And uh, we've seen quite a bit of that. So we have seen the interest from investors stay sort of 10 years and in. And um, yeah. so they and, are. Okay. Yep. Yeah. yeah. There has been that phenomenon. Mm -hmm. And is, so it, it impacts us. It's cost, correct? It does. Yeah. It's well, it's worth <clears throat> remembering the sales tax goes through 2038. And and here we are in twenty. So you, the most you could issue is a fifteen-year issuance. So you're always going to stay until you extend Measure A. Um, you're always going to stay fifteen years or shorter. So you won't have to contend with a sixteen through thirty-year uh, structure. So you're you you know the, where you are in your program now is going to let you stay short. That's probably for the better. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other uh, any any comments or questions from board members online? I do not see any hand raises in the Zoom. Okay, I don't see anybody else here in chamber. But uh, with all seriousness, seriousness, thank you, Peter and and 
and Kevin for, for watching out for this and taking advantage of, of opportunities to restructure debt when it makes sense for us. And it is extremely important. And, and I know, Kevin, if, if any members here have any follow-up questions, would, would Peter be available to them to have some of these discussions? Yeah, absolutely. I, I was going to try to summarize the kind of the overall, if I could take one second. So, I mean, the reason why we put you through the 20-minute presentation was, uh, you know, we've got $320 million in debt. Uh, it's it's a synthetically fixed, it's variable rate debt that we synthetically fixed out. And what we're seeing in the market is the the rates are getting to a point where we're going to be, the synthetically fixed rates are getting very close to the market fixed rates. And then we anticipate them dropping. So, you know, there's a possibility of fixing them out and then mm -hmm. refinancing later and saving and saving money. Now, there's a cost to do that, mm -hmm. but you know, we wanted to get you prepared because uh, we're kind of watching the market and see what happens. So we want to have this longer presentation because we could come back to you, say, hey, we want to refinance three hundred twenty million dollars, and you'd be like, what? So this is that this is that right. first long presentation. Hopefully, get you up to speed. Um, we're just watching it. We're not sure, but if the market does um, go how kind of we're thinking of it, there's there's possibility that we could hopefully save some money in the long run. So that was my short version of no, his 20-minute appreciate, appreciate that. We may need to act quickly if that's the case, right, if that opportunity arises. Yeah. Okay. I appreciate that. Any public comment on this item? Uh, we do not have any in chambers or any in the phone queue. Okay. All right. Then we'll move on to item 10, which is for uh, comments of um, directors. Any, any comments from uh, board members? Any in online? Uh, I Darrell? do not see any in the Zoom. Okay. Ben raises. Then that brings us to our, our final item for the uh, public meeting. We are going to, um, will we have to reconvene in open session after the closed session? I'm looking at our council. Technically, yes. Even if we don't, if you don't take any action, we come back and say you didn't take any action. So. Okay. The entire I mean, board or just the. If someone comes back in and makes the announcement, that should okay. be fine. I'll, I'll, I'll do that for the, for the authority. So thank you. That's, uh, that's part of the job. Okay. So with that, we will adjourn to a uh, closed session. And Which is going to be in here in room one. Yes. It will be in, in the. Here in chambers? room one. Room yeah. one. Okay. Um, right here outside. Room one. There. Yes. Okay. With that, I will adjourn or I'll. Uh, Recess. And, and members that are on the Zoom, you can stay in the Zoom, and um, and they will hear you in the hearing room one. So don't worry about that. Metro Cable will be leaving though.